So let's do a short example using the osmotic uh, pressure model. And this is actually taken from a real exam, uh, August of 2014. Uh, you have a pure water flux or clean water flux of 105 liter per square meter an hour. Note that we have now a non SI unit, and then you have a nice unit 105 or nice numeric value. Uh, uh, and this is at 60 bars and 20 degrees cent uh, centigrade. You have an equation for the viscosity, which is 0 0.0037 times the concentration plus one. Uh, in millipascal seconds uh, with the concentration there in gram per liter. Uh, C0, uh, we have 20 gram of glucose per liter and the concentration in the retentate is 100 gram of glucose per liter. Uh, we can assume that to be the same as the concentration and the feed side inside this uh, filtration unit. Uh, the molar mass of glucose is 180 gram per mole and the incoming feed is six cubic meters per hour. And the question is, uh, what is the required membrane area if uh, the retention is 100%? And as you might have guessed in the real example, there is a bit more text. I've just taken out the essence here. Now, I recommend you to, to pause here and try to think yourself, how would you go about solving this? Okay, let's uh, go through this. The first thing is to determine the membrane uh, resistance. And we do that with the clean water flux. So when we have pure water, nothing in it. Uh, the delta P there was 60 bars, so 60 times 10 to the power 5 Pascal. And note we changed now the unit to SI units. The viscosity at, at uh, 20 degrees, you have to look that at uh, up in a table. For water that is 1005 uh, 10 to the power minus 6 pascal seconds. Um, we actually had that, didn't we? Uh, yeah, we uh, we have an equation here. Uh, and if you put in C as 0 here, you actually get 1000. Uh, and if uh, you take a table value, you get that 1005. Okay, so I'm a bit, a bit, a bit more uh, careful here with this number. But if you had put in 1000 there, I would say, well, yeah, uh, you used the equation given, so fine. Uh, you had 105 uh, as the J flux, um, but we had to convert it into SI units uh, like this. 3600 seconds per, hour, seconds per hour and so on. And we get a membrane resistance of 2.047 uh, 10 to the power of 14 per meter. And to the power of 14, that's a reasonable uh, size, a reasonable magnitude. So that seems okay. Next, uh, we calculate uh, the difference in osmotic pressure. And since the retention is 100%, there is no concentration in the permeate. Uh, so the osmotic pressure in the permeate is zero. So the delta P pi simply becomes the pi on the feed side. Sorry for the Swedish there, uh, but this is taken from a Swedish lecture. Uh, and we calculate uh, that using RT and then sum of the concentration. And the molar mass of glucose is 180 gram per mole, and you had 100 gram per liter. So you get 0 0.556 more per liter, and note that's a non-SI unit. And to calculate the osmotic pressure, you need to translate that into SI units. So, and that's mole per cubic meter. So that's 556 mole per cubic meter. And delta pi then is the, uh, the gas constant, 8.314 uh, times the, uh, con uh, the temperature in Kelvin, since this has to be SI units and you get 13.5 10 to the power of 5 Pascal. Uh, the viscosity, we use the equation we got, 0 0.037 uh, times 100, and then plus the one there, and you get 1370 10 to the power of minus 6 Pascal second. 
And let's see here, uh, we calculate the permit flux, uh, delta p, uh, p minus delta pi, you have 60 10 to the power of 5 and 13.5 10 to the power of 5. You see that these two are in the same order of magnitude and delta pi is less than delta p, so that seems reasonable. Delta pi can't be larger than delta p because then the flow would go in the wrong direction. And uh, we calculate Rm before and we put in the viscosity here we calculated. And you, you get uh, 1.658 10 to the power minus 5 cubic meter per square meter and second. If you translate that to liter per square meter an hour, you get approximately 60 uh, or slightly less than 60 liter per square meter an hour. Uh, to get the required area, we need to make a mass balance. Sorry for, uh, it looks a bit messy here. I changed notation from F to Q for the volumetric flow. Uh, so it's uh, the mass balance becomes the volumetric flow of the feed times the concentration of the feed. Uh, that's what's coming in. And what's coming out must be the volumetric flow of the retentate times the concentration of the retentate. And there is nothing in the permeate. So the volumetric flux of the retentate must be the volumetric flux of the feed. And what was that? Well, we had six cubic meters per hour or 6,000 liters per hour. Uh, I also had the concentration 20 uh, in the feed and 100 in the retentate. So going back, we see that you then take uh, the, the 6,000 times 20 divided by 100 and you get 1,200 liters per hour. Now, uh, what comes in as liquid must goes out. So what comes in in the feed must be what comes out as the retentate and the permeate. So the permeate must be 6,000 minus 1,200. So 4,800 liters per hour. And uh, it's the permeate that we are interested in, right? So the permeate uh, in liters per hour is 4,800. And we calculated that you get 60 liters per square meter an hour, or to be more exact, 59.69 liter per square meter an hour. Sorry for the Swedish there. Uh, and you get a required area of 80 square meters.